Welcome everyone, I'm Joe DeLongware and today is the day I've been waiting for all summer long. Today is the day we're going to oversee my lawn, it's Labor Day weekend and we're going to throw down. So let's get started. But before we get going, I want to make sure everyone subscribed to the channel, so if you're not, hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on future content. I want everyone to join in on the fun so we can see my results here on my overseed this year. And if you have any questions on the applications today, make sure you comment below and I'll get back to you. So let's get back to it. So obviously the first step you want to do is spread out your seed. I'm just using an ordinary Edge uh, Scott's mini, uh, mini Edge Guard uh, spreader. Nothing special, you don't need anything special to spread it out because the most important thing is, is you're going to weigh out your grass seed. I've talked about this in an earlier video. If you haven't, I'll link it below and above. It's a great video. It shows you how to measure out your yard because you really want to weigh out how many pounds per 1,000 that you're going to need for each section of your yard. My section over here, it's a little over 700 square feet. So I'm using eight pounds per 1,000. So I weighed out about five, about six pounds into my bucket. Uh, here and I spread it out evenly over on this side of the yard and then when you get done if you would like after spreading it out I usually use a, a setting between five and six I usually do two passes I usually do a vertical and a horizontal or up and down and sideways to evenly distribute it and then when you get done you can always take a light rake a leaf rake a plastic rake whatever rake you have and you can just easily uh, spread it out a little bit more and make sure you get some good seed to soil contact this is most important if your lawn is in bare dirt like mine is mostly if you have a lot of grass that you're overseeding into and you want to make sure that seed gets down into the soil just lightly, lightly take a rake over top of your grass and you can work that seed down into the ground that's an option if you would like it's not recommended but if you would like to get that seed down to that soil you definitely can do that approach as well if you're new to my channel and you're curious what grass seed I am using this year, I'm using a Mountain View seed blend that I got from Tuckahoe Turf Farms in Hamilton, New Jersey. It's a sod farm. They use this seed right in their sod that they plant in their farm. And also, I'm using a Barrenbrook RPR. It's a perennial ryegrass. It's a regenerating perennial ryegrass. It's like KBG. It spreads. I'm using that in the back of my house. As you can see behind me, I do have the Mountain View seed here in my Scott's uh, mini edge guard spreader right here um, i'm using those two blends because i want a good quality seed in my lawn that's one of the first recommendations of my five steps that i recommend for a good successful overseed a quality seed is key the mountain view seed it's a blue tag certified seed it has really good cultivators in it it also has it's a 10 it's a 90 percent and a 10 percent kbg mix 90 percent tall fescue and 10 percent uh kentucky bluegrass so it's really great uh, good quality seed for your lawn because it has that KBG has a spreading capabilities I did a whole video on why I chose this grass seed uh, Just like what I talked about a little bit here, but I went more in depth in that video I'll leave it below if you want to check out that video as well So one of the things that I like to do is I like to do the edge of the perimeter of the square footage that I'm doing first That way I can put the edge guard on I'm not getting any overlap into any cement areas sidewalk areas driveway areas I'm not uh, wasting any seed and I'm throwing it out into the sidewalk area. So I will always do the edge first of the perimeter of the square footage that I'm working on. And then I'll flick off the edge guard and then I'll have it on the full setting, the broadcast setting. And then I'll just go back and forth, up and down both ways until I evenly distribute the seed out into my yard. So once you lay your seed down, you want to put down a nice quality starter fertilizer. That was my second step on my process for a successful overseed. As you can see here, I have the Yard Masteries blend uh, starter fertilizer. It's a 12-12-12. It's spiked with their Bionite, which is uh, their version of Malorganite, but it comes from South Florida as opposed to Milwaukee, where Malorganite comes from. It's a very good quality starter fertilizer. You get a, a lot for your buck with this bag. I did a cost comparison as well earlier in the year between their bag and a uh, big box store brand. So you get a lot for your your money it's, it gets delivered to your house um, I just love their brand I've used their fertilizers throughout the year um, I've had a very a lot of success with it um, it's very easy to weigh out as well it's three pounds per 1,000 all their fertilizer lines are three pounds per 1,000 so it makes it very easy for you to calculate out what you need for your yard so yard mastery all their blends are three pounds per 1,000 so it's very easy to calculate out what you need you can take the same square footage as 
that you use for your seed to figure out how many pounds of seed that you need for each section and you can use the same square footage and figure out what you need in your yard. So for instance, this area of my yard right here on the side of my uh, driveway right here is 700 square feet roughly. So if we take 700 and we divide that by 1,000, 1,000 square feet, we always do by 1,000 square feet you'll get 0 0.70, you times that by three for the three pounds per 1,000, and that gives you roughly 2.10 pounds. You can round that up to 2.4 or 2.5 or two, however you would like. It's not gonna burn your grass seed, it's only gonna promote good root depth. Once you get done putting down your starter fertilizer, the third step that I recommend for a good successful overseed is put down a good biostimulant. The two biostimulants that I'm putting down today are R8 and RGS. RGS you're going to put down at 3 ounces per 1,000 and the air eight here you're going to put down at 9 ounces per 1,000. So RGS and air eight are going to do two separate things. The RGS is going to be great for root development and deep root growth. So again I highly recommend you put this down 3 ounces per 1,000. I put this down last year and it did very well for my soil and for my new grass seed that I planted and that's what you want here for today. In the air eight here we're going to put down at 9 ounces per 1,000 like I said. It's really great for water retention. It's great for getting the water down into the soil canopy. It's gonna drive those nutrients down into that new root growth that we're gonna be developing with the new grass seed. So the aerate is really recommended, especially if you didn't do a me mechanical aeration. I didn't do one this year, I did one last year. Um, but if you've been using this throughout the year, you should be good. My soil is not very compacted, but I highly recommend that you put down the aerate, especially if you haven't done a mechanical aeration. So what's really great about these products are you can mix them together. I have a measuring cup that I use. I just measure out how many ounces that I need. I have it calculated on my spreadsheet. I always use everything in Excel to calculate out what I need. Again, RGS, three ounces per 1,000. Air eight, nine ounces per 1,000. So again, I mix it up in my cup. I put it into my hose and sprayers and I can spray it out in my yard. You can put down liquid fertilizers and biostimulants of multiple ways. You can put down through a backpack sprayer like I have here. This is by SprayMate. I have a T-Jet nozzle on the end of my wand here. Uh, obviously backpack sprayers are gonna retail higher than your hose end options that I have down here as well. But this SprayMate is a very good DIY friendly backpack sprayer. I did a video on two affordable ones that you can check out if you would like. I'll leave the link below. You can also put down liquid fertilizers through hose end sprayers like I have here. This is your traditional ortho option. You can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's. And this one right here is made by Chapman. Uh, John Perry from Longcology, Green County Fertilizer, he put out a video recently about the Chapman. I'm going to try this out today. It looks like it's a really cool hose end sprayer, so I'm going to try this one out today. So obviously there's two ways you could spray them out. The Chapman right here, as you can see on the video, it's really cool. It has a, like a downward spray pattern as opposed to the ortho that has more of a, like that, that shower uh, spray um pattern so this chapman is really cool this might be my go-to now for my hose and sprayers i'm going to use it for the rest of the year probably on the one side of my yard and see how i like it um, it's really easy to fill up has a great filter in there as well has an on and off switch at the top um, which is really cool Ho hooks right up to your hose so you can't go wrong with the chapman i'll leave a product link below i got this on amazon for 20 bucks prime eligible obviously so it's really cool, gets delivered to your house. So obviously the Chapman, the hose and sprayers are a cheaper option, but if you wanna to upgrade to a backpack sprayer, the SprayMate is a great option right here. As you can see, after I got done spraying out my yard, I have very little left in this tank, if not anything. So it has great suction ability. And with that T-Jet nozzle, it gives those bigger droplets is what you want because you want to get this solution, the Air 8 and the RGS, you wanna get that down into the soil canopy. So with the flood jet nozzle, that's what you're able to do. As you can see throughout my yard, it's very easy to put down. You're just stepping, you know, doing pretty much the same pieces you're gonna do with the hose end sprayer, but your solution's all back in the backpack sprayer. You have all your water in there. So four gallons, it equals about 4,000 square feet. So obviously if you have over 4,000 square feet of an area that you're spraying, you're gonna to have to do two uh, applications. You're gonna to have to fill it up as many times as you're gonna to have to. All you're doing is just mixing everything together. You don't have to mix a little bit into your uh, hose end sprayer where you can only fit so much. This you can fit a lot more obviously in a backpack sprayer. But a backpack sprayer is a great option uh, if you're really gonna get into liquid fertilizers and you're gonna really like applying this. The spray mate is a great option to look into. I've used this throughout the year, haven't had any problems with it. And like I said, it has great suction ability so you can't go wrong with this backpack sprayer. 
Just note, when you do get a backpack sprayer, what I suggest you do is check out the affordable backpack sprayer options that I have. I always suggest everyone fill it up with water first so you get an idea what kind of walking pace you can and how much square footage you can cover with the different uh, PSIs that are in these backpack sprayers. So again, fill it up with water first, test it out with whatever nozzle you're gonna be using so you get an idea what kind of pace you're gonna need for spraying out your liquids with your backpack sprayer. So step number four on a successful overseed in my opinion is to put down a top dressing like peat moss. Why I say peat moss is a good insurance policy because especially when you're buying expensive grass seed. Grass seed prices are going to be going up this time this year and next year especially because the crop wasn't the greatest uh, to develop these grass seeds so they're going to be more expensive. So if you want an insurance policy I suggest putting down peat moss. Peat moss is a great top dressing. It's an organic matter to put into your soil. Um, it's going to help keep the moisture in your grass and your in your soil when you go to water and it's also a great uh, grass seed holder as well especially if you have birds around and birds are trying to get your grass seed putting the peat moss on top is going to prevent those uh, birds from getting to those grass seeds whatever way you spread peat moss you're going to get dirty i'm just going to let you know that now um, if you have the Lansy peat moss spreader you're still going to get dirty but it's going to save your time and it's going to save your life uh, it's, it, it's getting this. I'm so glad I got this for this year. I did a video on how to calculate how many bags you would need uh, for your yard with the 24 inch model like I have here. So go check out that video. If you do get the Lansy peat moss spreader, it will save you a lot of time to figure that out as well and some money as well because you need to calculate obviously out how many uh, bags that you need. I, I'm just using a regular three cubic foot bags of peat moss today and spreading it out in my yard. It's very easy to fill this up and spread out in your yard as you can see if you don't have a lancy peat moss spreader don't worry you can easily just put your peat moss into a gorilla car or a wheelbarrow you can use a shovel and just fling it out into your yard i used a bucket uh, last year i just filled up a small little white bucket that i got uh, from home depot and just sprinkled it out in my yard it did take me a very long time to do this method um, as opposed to the peat, lancy peat moss spreader right here because the Lancy peat moss spreader, it is retailed at $250. So it is a high price point, um, but it's just not good for peat moss as well. You can do sand in it and you can do topsoil as well. So if you're looking to do top dressing every year or overseeding every year, or if you wanna rent this out as well and make some money back on that $250, I suggest you invest into the Lansy peat moss spreader. Once you have your peat moss laid down and nicely spread out, and let me tell you that Lansy peat moss spreader makes life so much easier. So definitely recommend checking that out. Step number five, the most important step I, I believe and in my opinion is to water. You have to water the seed. You don't wanna waste all that time and money and not water. What I'm gonna be doing is watering four times a day until my seed that starts to germinate and then from there I'm gonna taper it off. What's really great about using that peat moss is you can really tell when your areas are dried out. Peat moss tends to turn darker when it's moist or wet and when it turns uh, lighter, that means it's not as wet and it, the, there's, it's losing its moisture. So it's a really great indicator on when you need to put down more water. If you don't have an in-ground irrigation system, uh, like I do at my house, what I did last year was is I used a Melnor water timer. Uh, I'm gonna show you right here. This is a Melnor water timer. This is a two port one. They also sell a four port one as well. What's really great about the Melnor water timers, and I have an in-depth video on how to set it up, instructions and everything, I'll leave a link below and above. What's really great about the Melnor water timers are they have four different times a day that you can put a cycle on. So one zone can come on four different times a day, which is really great, especially for overseed time when you need to keep that soil moist. The Melnor water timer is great having that four uh, separate different times on one cycle is awesome. So that's pretty much it for today. That's my process of doing my overseed. Those are the five steps that I do. Um, in addition to those five steps, I do highly recommend that you dethatch your lawn to get any dead material out. And if you don't aerate your lawn, uh, aerate it. Um, you don't have to do it every year. Um, I do recommend you do it you know, every once, every say three to four years, especially if your soil is very compacted. Um, air raiders are very hard to get. You have to go to rental stores like Home Depot or you could actually hire someone to come out and air rate your lawn. So that's pretty much it for the overseed process. Obviously those are five steps are very important. I highly recommend that you follow those steps. So let's recap. Number one is a quality grass seed. Today we use the Mountain View grass seed. I highly recommend that. It came from a turf farm right here in New Jersey. 
In the back, we did the Barenbrug RPR. Step number two is a quality starter fertilizer. Today, we use the Yard Mastery Blend, the 12-12-12. Um, so I recommend you check out that blend. The product link will be below. Step number three are good biostimulants to put into your soil. Today, we use the RGS at three ounces per 1,000, and we use the R8 at nine ounces per 1,000. Step four is peat moss. I highly recommend that you put it down. It's a great top dressing. It introduces that organic material into your soil, and also it's gonna help hold that moisture in the ground. And for me, it's an insurance policy. It's gonna help with that germination in that grass, especially if you're using a very high quality grass seed like I use today, that's an expensive brand, uh, both of them are. And if you want good germination, I just feel like it's a little bit more of an insurance policy when you put that peat moss down on top of your seed. And step number five is water. You need water to generate the grass seed and get good germination. So again, I highly recommend you water, water, water. That's how I say here, I know I saw a comment in my last video, but up here in the Northeast, that's how we say water. So please, water your grass. And I'm gonna be watering four times a day until the seed germinates, and then from there, I'm gonna taper it off. If you found today's content helpful, make sure you smash that like button and it helps out with the YouTube algorithm so other people can find my videos. Again, if you're new to my channel and you're interested in the more detail about the five successful steps that I find for a fall overseed, check out the video right here. And if you're interested in that backpack sprayer that I use, a more in-depth video, check out the video right here about that spray mate. And again, if you're new, hit the subscribe button right here.